Yeah, Mark, two big headlines today. The mayor and the chief say they've identified $76 million in reductions for 2021 from the Seattle Police Department based largely on the money allocated for the 911 center and for parking enforcement. They also said that they're gearing up for a fight if the council decides to make more drastic budget reductions. We cannot cut officers overnight when there's no plan. That's Seattle's Mayor Jenny Durkin uncharacteristically taking shots at the city's council and the majority's pledge to cut half of the police budget this year. Seven out of nine council members committed to cutting SPD's budget by 50% without a plan, without a plan on how they would do so, what they would cut, or an assessment of what those cuts would have on response times, officer diversity, training. It is reckless to advocate for this type of cuts that have been proposed by the city council. I will not sacrifice officers of color for political points. The escalating tension comes after multiple weeks of protests and a pair of council led forums last week in which community leaders called for defunding a large chunk of the department sooner rather than later. As a black man, I get as mad as anybody else when I see a George Floyd. Minister Nate Miles has been at the table with the mayor in chief and suggests no budget decision should be rushed. I think a budget cut should be much more um, with a scalpel so that it can be very, you can, you can go around something and take your time and going around and be very delicate when you're cut. The work that the city council is actually trying to do as opposed to um, the spin that we're hearing about um, about the work that we are undertaking. The council's president claims her group will use a scalpel instead of a sledgehammer, but with a vote likely coming before the end of summer break, Durkin is using her bully pulpit to draw a line. If that means zeroing out the budget and there's no police, I will veto it. Other council members like Seattle Council Member Shama Sawan accused the mayor and the chief today of gaslighting the situation. There is another budget hearing on this issue scheduled for Wednesday. Live tonight in Seattle, I'm Chris Daniels, King 5 News. Chris, thank you. So as big budget changes come to Seattle's police department, where do calls to defund police stand in other cities across western Washington? King 5 Steve Bunin takes a closer look tonight. So we reached out to the mayor's offices and police departments today in Tacoma, in Everett and Olympia, the three biggest cities in Pierce, Snohomish and Thurston counties, asking if they had any comment on what's going on with the proposed changes for the Seattle Police Department's budget or if there are any similar plans to examine or perhaps change the budget for police in their own cities. In each case, their response was a polite no comment. Now, some of them did confirm that their budgets have been impacted by the pandemic, but that was citywide, not specifically the police department getting cut. <laughs> Only Seattle, which has witnessed more intense protesting overall and more specific demands for cutting funding for police, is enacting any sweeping changes so far. We do know that in Tacoma last month, three police officers were put under investigation for complaining on TikTok about being asked to patrol protests to defund police. One last note, I also reached out to the city of Marysville, which said there have been no discussions about defunding police there, adding, quote, Marysville residents and our city leadership are supportive of continued investments in our police department. Steve Bunin in the King 5 Newsroom, back to you. Heard back from Tacoma's mayor, Victoria Woodards, about police funding in that city. She said they are working on next year's budget and are looking for feedback. Her statement said, in part, the Tacoma City Council and I have called for a complete transformation of our systems with an eye toward addressing the impacts of racism head on. Our first priority is policing. Some of the changes we need to make, like the implementation of body worn cameras, will require funding. County Superior Court judge says a petition to recall Mayor Jenny Durkin can go forward. The petition was filed by five Seattleites last month. It seeks to have the mayor removed for violating her oath of office for her handling of the protests against racism and police brutality, including allowing SPD to use chemicals on peaceful protesters during a pandemic. Petitioners now need 56,000 signatures from Seattle voters within 180 days to force a special election. 
We found out that protesters have filed claims against the city of Seattle. Attorneys tell King 5's Natalie Swaby they're also going after other government agencies with claims of misconduct. These attorneys say they represent peaceful protesters who were badly injured. One was even killed. Today, they began taking action on their client's behalf. Oh. The recent protests that erupted into this oh. are the focus for these attorneys today. We are bringing claims against the city of Seattle, the police department, King County and the state of Washington for their roles in injuring or leading to the death of these protesters. Attorneys Karen Kohler and James Bible said their clients were peacefully protesting, including seven-year-old Josiah Avery, who attended a daytime demonstration with his father. Bible says a police officer used pepper spray on the boy. His face was burning, his nose was running, his eyes were watering, and all night he said he felt like his face was on fire. The attorneys provided pictures of more injuries and criticized the lack of police presence in the so-called CHOP zone. They protected the police in the buildings, but not the protesters on the roadways, which are public. Her client, Dan Gregory, was shot while trying to stop a driver who went around barricades toward protesters. In another incident, Summer Taylor was protesting on the freeway when a driver allegedly went around blocked roads and hit and killed Summer. Kohler says a King County Sheriff's deputy mocked the death on social media. The Sheriff's Office says the employee has been removed from active duty while the matter is investigated. As for the claims filed, Seattle police say they cannot comment on pending litigation. But last month, the police union president did talk about demonstrations that turned into riots with protesters throwing rocks and bottles and police using tear gas. They say they were badly hurt too because of the way the situation escalated. What would you say to that? I would say what role did the city play in escalating the situation? The attorneys say submitting notices of claims against the city of Seattle, the state and King County is the first step that they must take before possibly suing a governmental entity. In Seattle, Natalie Swaby, King 5 News.